to today's session. So we continue looking at the 2021 Mathematics Paper 1 exams. So we've done question 1 up to 15 in the first three parts of our series. Then we are looking at question 16 today. So if you haven't watched the first uh, parts or now to answer question 1 through to 15, please consider going back and watching them. Let us look at question 16. So question 16 leads find the equation of a straight line which is perpendicular to the line 2y equals 2y minus x equals 3. Okay? Passing through the points negative 4 comma 1. Negative 4 comma 1. So what we know first, the first thing that you need to bear in mind is a general equation is given by m multiplied by x plus c where m is the gradient. Now, if two lines are perpendicular to each other, it means these lines are meeting in such a way that they are crossing at 90 degrees. If you are crossing at 90 degrees, what it means is these two lines have got a gradient in such a way that when we multiply them, they should give us a negative 1. So they have got a gradients that are inverse to each other in that way. So if one is positive sloping, the other one will be downward sloping with meeting at 90 degrees. So using that in that principle, so we have this equation 2y minus x equals to 3, then it means 2y is equal to, then x crosses this side becomes x plus 3. We make y the subject of a formula, we divide by 2 by 2, so y is equal to basically half x plus 2, 3 over 2. So this equation has got a gradient of m1 is equal to half, which is the coefficient of x. So meaning the gradient of a perpendicular line will have the inverse of that one. So in such a way that we have half multiplied by m2, we should get a negative 1. Remember this principle? So making m2 the subject formula, so m2 is equal to basically negative 2. So because we are multiplying this into multiplied by negative, we get this one. So we're just dividing or dividing by half this side and half this side. So we're getting a negative 2. So negative 2 is our gradient. So now given that, given that, what this implies is now we have y is equal to negative 2, which is m2 here, multiplied by x plus c. So now, we know what uh, x are at this point are being asked. So it's just substitute y is a 1, 1 is equal to minus 2 multiplied by minus 4, which is the value of x at this point, then plus c. So we have 1 is equal to, basically let me use a different cursor to do not confuse, minus 8 plus, plus 8. Okay? So what that tells us, tells us is c is equal to 8 closer to the equal sign becomes a negative. So 1 plus 1 minus 7, we have negative 7. Okay, so that's our c. So now, given that we found our c in this equation, we found our c, what that tells me is basically what is this equation now. So this equation is nothing but y is equal to minus 2x plus we cannot plus because c is a negative, so c is negative 7, so minus 7. So we end up with this equation, y is equal to negative 2x minus 7 as our answer on part A. So this is how you answer part A. Okay, so having answered part A, we can move to question B, 16B. In the answer space below is an incomplete uh, flowchart for calculating the curved surface area of a cylinder. The curved surface area of a cylinder with radius R and IH. Calculate the complete the flow chart. So complete the flow chart. So the first thing is we need to remember what how to define the area of the area of a cylinder. The surface area within a cylinder is given by uh, 
the circumference which is 2 pi r multiplied by the height so this is the surface area the surface area of that cylinder so of the cylinder like this then you're talking about this surface area so this shaded is surface area okay remember which is the curved so we have that so the first step there is we need to enter the value of interest so we need to enter because remember we're finding area so the first one there we need to enter what do we need to enter the radius and h so that's what you put here enter radius and height then the second step is to calculate okay is to calculate so what are we calculating so now we are calculating area this formula so we are calculating this formula now which we need to enter to put area is equal to 2 pi r h is what you put there so this is area not pi so this is area like that once you do that you ask it to give you the output from this function then the output then you stop then you would have completed this part so basically this is how you get these two marks and two marks to get the four marks as quicker as that okay let us move to question 17 so question 17 just to ensure that you see properly later let me just zoom it a bit let me just zoom it a bit so so that you see part a so part a leads the figure below shows parallelogram with center o so center o which is this see center o which is this one basically describe fully the symmetry of the parallelogram about the center o the center o so want to describe the the symmetry so when talking about symmetry what you are saying is when you fold this we are going to have the the parts closing against each other so they should be fitting properly so if you notice here <coughs> if we draw a line at the center like here like here when you fold this side and this side it will not match because the lines are not straight okay it can't match so that one doesn't work out if you draw a line of symmetry here a line here try to fold this head and this head it will not work it can't work so if we draw a line there we try to fold this and this because the distance are different they are opposite this will not work okay if you did like this it will not work so what you notice here is uh, the parallelogram in this case it has no line of symmetry at center or there is no line of symmetry at all so what it is is there is zero line of symmetry no line of symmetry at all so basically that's what you answer on question 17a okay so let us look at part b part b the diagram below shows triangle A which is mapped onto triangle B by a single transformation P. Describe fully the transformation P. So if you notice here is what you notice here is this this side is much with this side, then this side is this side. So the distance from here to the center here, this is negative four, this is positive four, then this is negative three, this is positive three, then this is negative one comma negative one, this is positive one comma positive one. So what we are seeing here is one the there is just basically a transformation by a factor scale factor so scale factor of negative one because whatever was negative here now positive whatever was negative here now positive whatever is negative positive so it's a scale factor of negative one so when we have that kind of transformation p with a scale factor of negative one what it means is is we have a line of reflection see this line of reflection this is a line of reflection called y is equal to negative x okay at line y negative is equal to negative x so it's around the origin okay it's around the origin 
So basically, this is what you, you notice. So it's a reflection of triangle A on 2B using a line of reflection Y is equal to negative X. Or the scale transformation by scalar factor of negative 1 of all the vertices on triangle A to B. So basically, that's how you deal with this one. So let us move on. We go to question 18. So question 18 leads, it's given that y varies. So probably let me just also zoom it out so that you are able to see properly. Okay. It is given that y varies directly as, as 2x and inversely as z square. y is equal to 4 when x is equal to 8 and z is equal to 2. Find the value of k, the constant of variation. So what you notice here is from here what you can get is y varies directly as this one. So it will be 2x, we multiply by the constant k, then inverse it as this one, which is z square. So what you are told is when y is equal to 4, and x is equal to what? 8, so 2 times 8, then we multiply by the constant k, over what is z? z is 2, so it's 2 square. So we have 4 is equal to 16k over 4. Then we solve for k. So this is over 1 multiply. This one multiply by that one we get basically uh, 16 is equal to 16k. So k is basically nothing but a 1. So we are dividing by 16, by 16 this side, so that we have a 1. So k is basically equal to 1. So that's how you deal with it. question A. Let's go to question B. So question B, the value of y when x is equal to 27 and z is equal to 3. The, the value of y, okay? So we know what this equation now becomes. Y is equal to, remember k is a 1, 1 times 2x, we have just 2x over uh, z square. So y in this case will be, remember the value of x is 27. Then the value of z is basically 3 square. So we have y is equal to 2 multiplied by 27 over 9, which is 3 times 3. So we end up with 9 into 9 is a 1. 9 into 27 is a 3. So we end up with 6. So y is basically 6 for b. Okay, so having done b, let us look at c. The values of z when x is equal to 24 and y is equal to y is equal to 2 y is equal to basically 3. So again here we are going to use this formula. Then we know that y is equal to 3 equals then 2 times what is x? x is 24. Then what is z square is what we are looking for. Then we are going to cross multiply. So we have 3z square is equal to 2 times 24. So we divide by 3, we divide by 3. We mean if z square is equal to 3 into 3 is a 1, 3 into uh, 24 is 8. 8 times 2, we get 16. So we find the square root, the square root here. What we discover here is we have z is equal to positive. The square root of 16 is 4. So z is equal to 4 or z is equal to negative 4. So these are our answers. So these are our two answers to C. Okay. So let us move to question 19. So 19 leads, find an integral of 6x squared minus 2x plus 7 with respect to x. So m, let us start with m. So we are integrating 6 x square, then minus 2x plus 7 dx. So when you start integrating this one, what it means we have 6 x square plus 1 over 2 plus 1 minus 2 
x remember this x as the power one then we had the power one then we divide by the new power okay that's the law of integration then this 7x 7 as a is 7x to the power zero because x to the power zero is a one one times seven is a seven so we're adding a one then one plus zero then plus a constant there then what we get is basically 6x to the power 2 3 over 3 then plus 2x to the power 2 over 2 then we have plus remember okay this is a negative sorry so this is a negative so not a plus it's a negative then we have a 7 then x to the power 1 over 1 plus a constant so when you simplify this one we're just getting 2x square minus sorry so we have a minus x square then plus 7x plus c so this is our integral okay this is this is x to the power 3 sorry this is our integral which is 2x cubic minus x square plus 7x plus c okay so that's part a then part b but B leads, the areas of two similar cylinders are 64, 64 centimeter square and 36 centimeter square respectively. If the height of the larger cylinder is 30 centimeter, find the height of smaller cylinder. So the height and the length are almost the same. So if you have two sides that are in the, in the ratio, let us say H1 to H2, then this is height ratio then area ratio will be equal to will be equal to area one to area two we'll find the square root of these two these two should be equal should odd these should odd so what we know is, let us let us say H uh, H two is the larger cylinder. H two is the larger cylinder. So what this tells us is, what we have when you compare, we are looking for small one. So when you compare, to be H one to H two is equal to the square root of area one over square root of area two. So area one. Uh, a, a eight one is what we're looking for. We shall call it x over a eight two is third centimeter for the larger cylinder. Third is equal to what's the area of the the smaller cylinder? Is thirty six. Uh, then you find the square root of this thirty six. Then the larger cylinder, which is the square root of sixty four. So what we end up with is in this case it will be uh, x over thirty equals 6 over 64. 64, the square root of 64 is 8. So basically x is equal to, now we cross multiply, it will be 6 times 30 over 8 by solving for x. So we know that 8, 2 into 8 is 4, 2 into 6 is 3. Okay, then what we know is, um, 2 into 4 is 2, 2 into 30 is 15. 15 times 3 is 45, then 45 divided by uh, 2, we get 22.5. So here our answer is 22.5 centimeter. Okay, 22.5 centimeter is the height of this small cylinder. So basically, this is how you deal with question 19. So for now, we shall end on question 19. Then we shall pick it up in our final part on question uh, 20 all the way up to 23.